All right, so here's the motor here. Uh, this is uh, this is the engine that's going into the GDI here, GDI Ranger. Uh, approximately 258,000 on it. And uh, yeah, so things I noticed right off the bat, everything's been cut, that's lovely. Um, it's been outside, so it's, uh, it's a little damp, but it should be all right. Uh, I don't know. There's some hokey stuff going on around here, and there's uh, some mess there. The injection pump harness is still on it, but it's cut here. So I guess that's where I'll plug mine into from there. And then... Uh, yeah, um, I noticed that the VNT actuator here is seized and it looks pretty rusty and crusty. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start disassembling this. Um going to delete all this garbage anyway, and it's just going to have a uh, EGR delete. And this here uh, co inner cooler, I'll probably delete that maybe, I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. That's pretty good as far as uh, it heats up the coolant quicker. So I might leave that on, but probably not. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I'm going to take this off, check the turbo out, see what kind of shape it's in, and hopefully it's all right, at least to uh, get it running. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna just see if I can set the camera up here. Here's the intake, and you can see I've seen these really bad. This one's got a little bit of buildup, quite a little bit, to be honest, but it's not really bad. And then the inside there, there's a lot of buildup as well. So I'll show you how you clean that out and you gotta get yourself an air hose and you gotta get yourself a blowtorch and people say this is gonna like you know warp it and whatever but i've had no problems doing this on other ones so. Then you just kind of pick a port and blow it out.
All right, so this is uh, just kind of putting together the adapter plate here. It came with the starter, the uh, plate for the transmission and the motor plate, and the adapter there for the flywheel. Um, so right now I'm working on the transmission side and it was kind of scary because I had to cut a little notch out of the transmission here. Uh, <laughs> my opinion, the directions were not that clear, but anyways, uh, that's what I did. Uh, I put the plate on and then I marked it out and according to what I found in the diagram or in the directions there, it said something about an inch and a quarter uh, wide by an inch and uh, 1.1 inches uh, deep. So I tried to do that and it actually ended up bigger. So I think bigger is better than smaller. And when you put the starter on it here, the, uh, the holes line up with those ones there, I believe. And uh, I'll get you down in there. There we go. And as you can see here, the block had some rust on it. I treated it and uh, it's got to have another another little dosage of uh, of a rust converter. But uh, I started putting the adapter plate on here. And yeah, so I think this here may end up being an issue. Um, anyway, I guess that's why they sell that little adapter piece. I was hoping to get away without it, but anyway, we'll see what I can do here. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm up to right now, so I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so the adapter kit here is mounted up onto the engine. The flywheel's mounted. I had to actually shorten these bolts to fit into the, um, the flywheel adapter, or the crank adapter, or whatever um that the kit comes with there so if they were too long i had to shorten them and i just finished cleaning the flywheel off with the greaser and i see it's got a lot of fuzzies on it there that i'll have to clean up but uh, as soon as i do that i get the pressure plate here and the friction disc there and the alignment tool there so i'm gonna put it all together here and uh so a couple hours later here um really good progress actually so under the truck here i have been just test fitting basically um seeing where everything's gonna line up and i'll be look at this here's the factory mount right got the uh factory mount on the tranny there all on there it was a bit of a nightmare well not really like to get that uh Get this transmission bolted up the input uh bearing or whatever it is there the pilot bearing was having a hard time to slide in but uh my advice for that is get it slid in and don't force it because if you do you're going to either damage it or push it ahead so i believe that i did not damage it and it slid in properly eventually so it took a little bit of fussing um, I used the jack here to lift it up into place and lined it up and worked it my way around. Got one bolt in it to hold it straight, sort of, so it didn't fall on me or anything. And then uh, just kept working at it. Uh, if you notice, right up there, this is just something to mention. Uh, right there, so you can see the starter gear. I made sure it lined up with the flywheel. It seems okay. But uh, I don't like that because you can see it and it should be sort of covered over because directly opposite of that is like the wheel well area. So it's going to get debris and dirt and stuff in there. So that'll in inevitably ruin the clutch and the starter probably premature. So I see there's two bolt holes right there threaded. So I thought that would make a perfect place to make a little covering for that. That'll be at a later time, but I just wanted to note that. Um, and that's the factory mount I got there. This is where the engine ends up. And surprisingly, it's where it needs to be. Everything seems to clear. I can't even believe this right now because everybody online says you have to move the motor ahead two inches and get drive shafts and all this nonsense. But probably that's true, except this, I lifted it, right? I got the lift on it. So 
that little bit of lift seems to have been able to clear everything that it needs to. So there's uh, one coolant hose there, another coolant one there. There's the vacuum pump. Um, it's tight in there, but it's not touching. Like, you know, you got an inch or so to play with there. Um, on this side here, the closest thing I'm seeing to a interference is that right there on the oil cooler. Um, so that may be an issue, but I don't think it will be once I get these mounts made up. So, and then on this side here, there's, there's lots of room to play with. Nothing, no concerns there. And if you look under here to see what the clearance is, like there's a perfect little groove for that oil pan right there. And there's lots of room on either side of it. So no concern there in my opinion. So I'm gonna make up some mounts, get her mounted. All right, so here we are, the motor is mounted. Um, f fairly straight. Hard to tell in the video here, but that's uh, pretty well straight. Uh, so, made my own mounts. Um, not really pretty, but you know what I did? I took the stock Ranger mounts, cut where, like, you know, however it would work. But on this one, I cut it straight back, and then I cut a piece of a frame on it off an old Ranger and welded that to there. And then that there was an addition at the end of it because I just kind of thought maybe I should have something to the upper side of it a little bit just to keep it from like rocking or something so i did that and uh yeah so that's that side this side down here also the ranger mount i just cut sort of a slit straight back and then i put a piece of angle piece of angle on it sort of and then it's bolted down below so that's how I got her mounted up there. Uh, the way things are looking right now, the uh, coolant line there is gonna clear, the starter clears, and there's enough room there. I think you could wiggle it out to change it if you had to. Certainly hope so anyway. Um, what else is there? The uh, I think as far as like the serpentine belt goes, I should have no problems with it because like this here is factory uh, location for that mounting stuff for the this here's the power steering pump and then the alternator sits here and then down there is the uh, uh, AC compressor which I don't have AC so that should be fine fine without it so basically it should be quite easy for me to just buy a belt for a TDI that doesn't have an AC compressor on it and just be able to run the belt as per usual at least i'm hoping so anyway um as far as clearances down in there the uh, oil filter cooler is basically up against the mount almost but it doesn't really matter because the motor wiggles and the mount wiggles with it so it's not like it's going to chafe or anything um yeah so that's uh that's that there's uh, there actually ended up being quite a little bit of room in behind the motor. And this is that stock mounting location on these Rangers. Um, so then the next thing is the, uh, the motor, when I had it there, I, I like, I want it to keep my spacing down here enough that I'm not going to hit anything when it rocks or whatever it's going to do. So I, uh, I ended up having to move the actual drivetrain itself over like an inch, maybe maybe not even and uh i don't i might have been able to get away without doing it but it's just the way it all worked out and uh, so what it looks like down under here if you see up in there i added a spacer and that is to lift it a little bit because the motor wasn't very level so that kind of helped level it out and uh yeah so Stock drive shafts, everything. Should be able to fit the stock front drive shaft. I need a universal joint for it first. And, uh, yeah. So, okay. So, on this mount here, or on this uh, cross member, I uh, furred out the sides of it a little bit so that the whole transmission could move to the right. Well, you know, it's not even an inch. It's about a half an inch or something to the right. And uh, that just kind of gave me 
the uh, the ability to clear the gas tank there and <clears throat> that's that so basically i'm in a pretty good spot here now if you look in here you can actually see like you can see the difference that's uh that's what happened so here's the plate that goes in there and it almost fits if you put it where it's is factory there it is so it's like an inch over maybe so not, not a big deal really i don't think anyway <laughs> time will tell i guess but everything seems to work out pretty well with it like that and like if you stand back here and you look at the drive shaft, you would like it looks straight, so it's not like there's any weird angle on anything. So as far as I can tell, that's gonna work out great, and uh, I'm happy about not having to buy drive shafts and stuff. That's a big deal. So here we are, and uh, a lot of stuff is actually outside, and if you see there, it's just a wicked storm out there right now. So. I'd like to be doing a few other things here, like I could be doing up the fuel system and getting everything sort of tied in, I guess, but uh, I don't want to go play around in the snow looking for stuff, so I'm going to wait, and uh, I think I'll probably see if I can get a radiator in here right now, and uh, anyway, but that's the motor mounted, so this is probably a video, really. One thing to note for your wiring, your mess of wiring, um... You're also going to have to extend your power cables, which is unfortunate. Like this here is the factory positive lead off the battery and it goes right to the battery. Easy done, but uh, it won't reach all the way around to there. So I'm just going to end up getting it around as far as I can, sort of like this with the bundle that's going to go across there. And then I'll get it to here, hopefully, and I'll splice into it there somehow. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use for that yet. And then uh, anyway, I'm gonna run down and hit the starter. And you need a ground wire to the starter and you need the hot to the starter and you need the switched wire right here to the starter. So, yep, so that's uh, that's uh, pretty simple really, but uh, I don't have the stuff to do that right now, unfortunately, so I gotta get some more supplies. And uh, yeah, so progress has been made.